British nurses and midwives are apparently at risk of losing their ability to practice medicine if they misgender patients. So they're kind of under the thumb of a regulatory agency called the Nursing and Midwifery Council. And in a recent document, they said, quote, Persistently and deliberately misgendering a trans person is contrary to the requirements of the code to treat people with kindness and respect. End quote. Okay, and there's actually a lot to break down here, because you might at first think, well, you know, it's going to be kind of awkward if you're repeatedly doing it in front of the person and they're uncomfortable or whatever, and it seems unkind. Um, so let's un un unpack this first. When you're talking to a person, you don't actually use a pronoun. So you don't gender the person. I, I mean, it's that's not what it's there for. So that's not what's taking place in any event. Secondly, to be kind um, is not necessarily to tell a person what he or she wants to hear, right? We are obligated to tell a person the truth because he has a right to hear the truth, right? Um, so it's not kind to lie to a person especially if they're struggling with some kind of delusional state, in which case, you know, it's, it's cruel. It's cruel to, to lie to them to reinforce the problem that they have. So there's that. But also, this is medicine. So now if you think, well, in what instance would you actually be using the pronouns of the person who is proclaiming to be transgender? Well, you'd be using those pronouns when you're talking to another medical professional about the patient. And in that instance, it would seem especially important to belie the person's, to actually share the person's real sex, right? Uh, because otherwise you end up just talking in circles. If the individual, you know, is suffering from stomach pain, it kind of matters whether the person is female or maybe pregnant or male. It's, we have different anatomy, right? Um, and instead, all of this is kind of discarded. So this is just like one area inside of medicine, but also in the same country, um, the the Labour Party um, of Britain is... Uh, they're expected to make progress in the next election, so they're actually expected to gain more ground, mostly because of how awful the Conservative Party has been. Well, they are threatening to change the law so as to make it illegal anywhere in England to misgender, which would be punishable by up to two years in jail. Now, already you kind of have some laws on the books, so to speak, that you can't be offensive to a person, but this takes it from that sort of, I guess you might call the equivalent like a misdemeanor, into something much more serious, because what they're trying to do is make misgendering a person into equivalent of an actual physical assault that is motivated by hate. So back in like the domain of hate crimes and all that. So all this goes together so that you would be afraid to speak the truth lest you spend two years of your life in prison for doing so. Like that's the evil. I think it's interesting the degree to which this, the, the gender war, um, or misgendering as they like to say, has become like a, a test of the concept of free speech. And it kind of shows the problem with the modern understanding of what free speech is. So we kind of have like this, this concept of free speech past and present, because in the past, it always used to be that we had free speech for a reason, because we had this, this concept, this understanding that our rights exist in association with our duties, that we have our rights so that we can perform certain duties that are, that are inherent um, you know, like our right to, to freedom of religion because so that we can exercise our duty to worship, right? That kind of stuff. So with free speech, it's like there was, it was about the, the right to speak the truth. And of course that included opinion because of the potential for truth there within. You can't judge an opinion to be false because it's just an opinion, right? But you don't have the ability, even in, you know, historical law to engage in defamation, right? The two types of defamation, right? There's libel and there's slander, but they're both uh, errors. You're talking falsely about a person, either in the case of libel by writing and slander by speaking. We, we, we didn't protect that. So even in the United States, when you have, you know, the constitutionally protected right to freedom of speech, you still had defamation laws prohibiting you from speaking falsely about people and thus destroying their reputations, 
right? So this is the the historic understanding of free speech, but the modern understanding came to be more like like license. Just you, you can kind of at least in in like in a cultural sense, it became just sort of like the freedom to to say anything regardless of what it is, regardless of how obscene, profane, or wrong um, that it was. It was just everything. And then you had this kind of notion of misgendering that I think kind of comes into that, where we're actually being forced to do away with truth there too. I, I hope you can see this connection, that it's like when the right to free speech is divorced from the right to speak truth, you kind of take that this weird extreme of, well, now you can't say truth at all. It's like, it's kind of this weird inversion. It's like, you're required to speak this falsehood because the state says so. Um, obviously, it's evil. And like I said, it, it's, it's also cruel to the people who you're lying to. But it's an injustice to the people who have a right to speak that which is true, which is that the man is a man, the woman is a woman, and those things can never change. So anyway, just some, some thoughts for you there. I, obviously, what you see happening in England is also happening in different places in the US and it spreads. We're very connected. We live in a very connected world now. Also, you have, you know, Canada is kind of in this, I don't know, um, in lockstep with these motions. So I think we should all pay attention to the direction that these different countries go to so that we know what's coming and what to fight.